I wake as though from a dream. I saw the stars in the sky so close that I could almost touch them. I saw the earth ravaged. Wait, I saw another Takio? Hello everyone and welcome to Outside. The series of course we're going outside zombies maps such as Alpha Omega, which we're gonna do today. I got a mod menu that allows me to do things such as turn on God mode as well as no clip. And let's see what's going on outside this here map, man. So to start things off here on Alpha Omega, let's start with the obvious, and that's the fact that this is just a massive desert out here. In the area that you spawn in here, you're on a road that seemingly leads out very deep into the desert, and we can follow that road as well, and alongside of it, it looks like there's some power lines. I'm not exactly sure if this is like meant to have led somewhere, like lore-wise, but well, it goes absolutely nowhere. You can reach the end here and get a view off into... Well, absolute nothingness. Although, hey, those those lightning effects are pretty cool. Look at that. And I mean, as far as like stuff out here, there is like some cactus and shrubbery. And on the other side of the map of the road, there's also like a few buildings out here. For instance, there's these two just chilling out here. It looks like they're pretty much the same exact model, just scaled differently. And if we fly on over this way, well, we can see the same can be said about these houses. Again, pretty much the same exact model. I'm, I'm actually pretty sure it is the same model. And there's just three of them here scattered about in the desert. What I do find kind of interesting is that the bunker that was on the original Nuketown seems to not be present here in Alpha Omega. And I'm really not sure if they meant to do that or if they just like forgot about it. But for me, it was always like one of the cooler aspects outside the map is that there was just like a bunker that it looked like people could have been standing in to observe the events of, well, that nuke dropping to the ground. Instead, there's just a bit of a hill here now and a whole lot of nothing. And if we head on underneath the map, there are a few things we can check out. So, I mean, first, there are the teleporter boxes over here. We got four of them lined up side by side. And for those who don't know, this is where you go to while you're looking at that animation during teleportation, before it brings you to your destination. But other than that, we also have a couple interesting things over here near where the nuke is. We got a couple buildings that are just underneath the ground, which is very strange. Although I got a feeling I know why this is. So, for those who don't know, I have barely played Black Ops 4 in my life. I bought the game when it came out, played it for about a month, and uh, after that I just gave up on it, to be honest. So, of course, because of that, I have never played this map, so I don't know what the Easter egg is, but, I mean, if I had to guess, surely the nuke is involved somehow, right? And if I am correct, it would make sense for why these buildings are underneath the ground. Perhaps this area deforms some point in the Easter egg, and you can actually see these buildings above the ground. Although I could be wrong, so let me know down in the comment section. I'd love to know. But as we start making our way back towards the map, we can start to take a look at a few details here. First, the sign here out front is completely blank. There's no writing on it whatsoever, which is kind of strange. Although, I suppose you would never see it, so I guess it makes sense. Also, there's a weird spot here where the ground is higher than the collision is, which is kind of strange as well. I mean, I'm not sure why, but there's just a random ditch here. We also got some Jeep-like vehicle out here that seems to have crashed, although, honestly, it's in pretty good condition. And it has a really well-modeled interior, although I'm noticing looking at this, well, it seems like it might be Russian, which is kind of strange considering we're supposed to be in Nevada. And this truck over here, of course, is definitely an American vehicle. It's actually got a lot of numbers on the front bumper. I imagine that there's no significance to any of them. But there's also some, like, ammo crates here. And let's just see, in the back here, is there anything going on? I mean, we got some crates and barrels, but I doubt there's anything inside of them yet. Surely not. And here's a nice up-close look at this sign, which I don't think you can really see very well from inside the map. And lastly, there's also this truck as well, which has like a, I guess like a lab coach is draped over the door. And yet again, the same interior that definitely seems like it's Russian. And starting off here in the little spawn area, to our right, we got this little guard post. Let's just hop inside of it. There's not any modeling inside of here, but it is kind of cool to see that there's at least textures. And there's also a little floating light as well. I imagine this was supposed to be hanging from something, but, well, here it is. And it does look like this does serve as a window location, and around the side there's some barrels and, I suppose, like, some stuff you wouldn't really get a look at. And, I mean, of course, there's also this guard tower. Unfortunately, the ladder doesn't work, but if we go ahead and no-clip on up, we can get a feel for, okay, well, you just fall right on through it. Well, so apparently this thing does not have collision, which is kind of strange because the roof does. 
I'm really not sure, like, why certain things have collisions and why other things don't in video games. Like, this example right here where the guard tower does not have collision, but yet the roof of it does, kind of puzzles me. I'm also noticing right out of spawn, there's, like, some really weird-looking objects here. Like, I don't know what they're doing with this, but these models are not placed very well. There's a cinder brick that's just floating, and surely you could easily see that from inside the map. There's a box here that's on its side and kind of in a place. I mean, it's literally floating on top of the folded piece of cardboard paper. And there's also a piece of sheet metal that, again, seems to be defying the laws of physics. But anyways, I feel like it's time to pass up the security checkpoint and hop on into the, the site entrance, I suppose. So it looks like immediately here we have a few window locations just scattered next to us, as well as a couple of doors to start going out, and I'm not entirely sure what to expect from this map. I mean, obviously I've played Nuketown, but I have never played this, and uh, man, it looks a lot different than it did back then. But just right here around the corner we have this little space, and on the other side there is a matching one which is a bit more interesting. We hop on into here. We got a desk and a chair, obviously, as well as like a tape recorder and a gas mask. And of course, a whole bunch of papers that say top secret special handling no foreign, which I'm really not sure what that means. But it looks like this does indeed have some writing on it that is legible. And it's addressed to the general staff with the subject Rushmore now operational. There's a lot of it that seems to be redacted, and at the bottom, well, the name is Cornelius Kernel, which in a series that is coming very soon, well, I, I just learned who this guy is. So yeah, kind of cool to see that guy making it into the Alpha Omega. I mean, I suppose it makes sense considering this is an American facility and he is a CIA handler. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, just, you know, wait for next week. And before we start heading into any of these buildings and such, there's also this little like quarantine area here in the middle which has some tents here we can just pop on into, and, uh, oh, what is that? Oh, it's a bandage. I don't know why, but for some reason I thought that was, like, strips of bacon. There's also more of the same paper here, so we can get a bit more of an up-close view at it. And towards the back, as we can see, well, there's not exactly much going on here. Wait, did his, did this guy's head change position? Because I could swear I just saw him, like, a second ago, and he was, like, looking forward, and now his head is twisted backward towards the direction that I was standing. Does this map have some like jump scare robot kind of stuff? Oh my God, it's, oh my God, it's turning. Well, that is, uh, that's creepy. Yeah, these mannequins have definitely changed a lot since Nuketown, haven't they? And starting off with our first house here, let's go ahead and hop on in to this little window location at, uh, I guess house 15 here, this, this blue one. This is a little out of bound space here in front of the building and we can walk around the side here. We got a bench, it looks like, and some boxes. And it does look like we have space here around the side, although there is a barrier blocking me, but I can go ahead and no-clip on through that and walk around, well, the entire building, I suppose. I mean, it is a pretty cool space, although there isn't any, like, hidden details, I don't think. I mean, there's a red solo cup here, so I suppose there's that. And let us see, does the front door actually lead somewhere? Uh, no. No, it does not. There is literally no front door to this place. So is like the story here that these buildings are complete facades because there's an MPD just chilling in here. So clearly this is, you know, broken arrow facility stuff going on and inside the building, it's definitely not a house. But that also makes me wonder like, why would they even be houses in this timeline? If instead of, you know, making a Nuketown facility that you're just testing a nuke on, you're making like a facility that does research like this, why would you make fake houses in the middle of a desert? I don't get it. I will have my ascension. Oh my. I mean, that's a pretty good map, so fair enough. Have at it, dude. Inside of here, there is one window we can check out, which is this one. It leads out to a driveway and a garage. Which, unfortunately, this area has a lot of barriers. Like, there's one right here, for instance. It kind of feels like there's supposed to be something here, but there's just not. And there's also a barrier blocking me from going this way, so we can't walk. But we make our way to the front of this house. So as far as this one goes, it looks like we got number 14. And obviously the door is viable here, so, I mean, it's, a, it's an actual door this time. It turned the atoms against us. CO says reinforcements will be here soon. Don't know how much longer we can hold. Interesting. So are the Adams like the robot guys? Like this dude right here? Hello, Adam. How you doing? But if we're heading on inside the house here, we do have this window location to check out, which seems kind of cool. Looks like we got a staircase leading up to a second level here that unfortunately has a barrier. Let's go ahead and no clip on past that. 
you take a look at this painting, which kind of creepy, actually. It looked like a face at first, but I guess it's not. It's like a building. To our left, we got this room, which is separated by a barrier, so we do have to clip into here. But looks like we got a bunch of control panels and stuff that I don't think you could really see very well from outside. I mean, sure, you can get a glimpse into here, but it is pretty cool that they put this much detail. There's even some, like, folders here on the ground, as well as a bunch of broken glass. Heading on over to the other side, we got another desk here with, like, a typewriter and some stuff. And filing cabinets, of course, with a whole bunch of files. And oh my god, what's going on right now? Yeah, I'm not sure what that's about. I imagine there's some barrier and collision issues going on here. So, unfortunately, standing in the room gives me a seizure. But hey, still a pretty cool room. And heading on out to the back here, we got some more stuff to check out. I mean, first of all, straight back, this is a window location. So I guess we'll check it out. There is this little power station here, which was on the original Nuketown as well. It looks like uh, Jeep here has... Well, it's seen some better days, hasn't it? Oh my god, wait, is that some lava right there? Hold on one second. There's definitely what looks like some magma here, or at least some, like, molten rock, or superheated rock, maybe. I'm not entirely sure, but it's very reminiscent of the original Nuketown, which, I mean, of course, had a whole lot of that lava and all that fun stuff going on, since, you know, the world had been destroyed by rockets from the moon and all that fun jazz. So, kind of cool to see that. I'm not sure why it would be there. Like, it doesn't really make sense. But kind of just a hint at the old Nuketown. And we can also take a walk here into the power station as well. There's not anything too terribly interesting, but it is cool to see this from a different perspective. And the sign here is floating a solid three feet off of the fence. Crazy, dude. I mean, surely, like, when you're inside the map, I mean, isn't that obvious? Like, that's obvious, right? That is not on the fence. Oh, there's a soccer ball. The soccer ball's gone. Is that a shootable Easter egg? Oh no, no, it's way out there now. Soccer ball has physics. There's also this little window location in the backyard, which has a whole bunch of space, but of course you can see most of this from inside the map. There's this little area here around the corner with a whole bunch of blood and an area where I guess like the hose or sprinkler system is just constantly going off. We got another truck here as well, but there's no one in it. And oh my God, we got a cooler. Wait, hold on, let me just uh, crack open a fresh one. Ah. Uh. Delicious. Oh, and, and what's this? Eh, weird. I, I, I really don't know. And it looks like this backyard does wrap around the side here to some playable space that leads you back into the original Nuketown, which kind of cool to see that there's like some gates here, although, okay, denied access, so I guess you can't buy that. Probably got to turn on the power first. I'm really excited to check out the original Nuketown space, but before we do, we got more space out here to check out, so let's head on back and go on into this house instead. Ooh, we got ourselves a projector in the garage. Look at that. I, I really hope I find some tapes, because, oh, part? What do we got? Too important to leave behind. I don't know what that is, but we got it. Yeah, definitely some interesting modeling going on here. It looks like we got a whole bunch of, like, tape players and things like that. I think this is a, like, encryptor, right? This, I mean, this, this right here is what you use for, like, ciphers and to code, to code messages and stuff, right? There's definitely some CIA stuff going on here, and of course we got a staircase leading on up to the second floor, but it doesn't look like there's any out-of-bounds space here, just a bunch of really interesting area at the MPD. But if instead of going into house number nine here, we take a right instead, there is some out-of-bounds space right here. Let's go ahead and hop on out around the side. We've got some props here lined up and another invisible barrier. If we pass that on up though, just an area for zombies to spawn here out of the ground. It looks like that's like the main mode of zombies spawning here on Alpha Omega, which is kind of unfortunate. It's my least favorite. I really don't like when zombies spawn in front of you in maps. I don't know if I'm like the only one and maybe this is just like a like a pet peeve kind of thing, but I don't know, man. The original World at War maps and like Black Ops 1 and even like most of Black Ops 2 as well, zombies would spawn out of sight and like around a corner and it would feel more like... You know, they're like, they're coming out of nowhere and, and like from like the, the deep edges of the map, you know, instead of zombies just digging their way out of the ground. Like, what is that right there, dude? Well, I noticed we got a door here and if we go around the other side, obviously there is no door here and there's some empty space. So let's just go ahead and hop on into it. Check it out. See what's in here. Looks like there's absolutely nothing. Although there is like a bricked up window here, which is kind of cool to see. Definitely looks like they could have made that part of the building if they wanted to, but obviously, well, they, they didn't. Although I suppose, yeah, so I suppose that brick that I'm looking at is actually this brick, like, back there, behind this whole encoder machine thing. 
So yeah, kind of cool to see how they did that. I mean, we got yet another one of these, which it does look like it's got some more of that like molten rock kind of thing going on here, which I suppose this is probably supposed to be 115, isn't it? Because that's where the zombies are coming from. But if we just went under here, we would see that, well, there's a whole facility down here, so it doesn't really make sense, but you know, whatever. And it looks like this area just again wraps around to some more playable space. And uh, well, there's a little bit of space here. That, I mean, I suppose you can't normally get to kind of a strange area, just some like more quarantine tents and some vegetation as well as as well as this. Not exactly sure what that is. Well, I suppose just because we can, let's go ahead and hop on into the interior of this car here. Kind of cool. Again, very well modeled for something that you would really barely ever see. I mean, we even have a radio here with numbering on it as well as a dashboard, which again, in degrees Celsius, kind of strange. But this then leads us on to the next house here, this number 10. And to the left, of course, we got a bit of out of bounds space. Let's go ahead and hop on out. We got ourselves a generator here leading on back to the original Nuketown. And some barriers I unfortunately cannot walk past. But if we go ahead and no clip, we can see around the corner. There isn't exactly anything hiding here. Just some pipage and valves that you can't do anything with. Although, look at how much that is moving. That's trippy, man. Look at that. It looks like it's like telling me something man like from another dimension dude and if we go ahead and no clip on past these trees here we're met with a little lunch table i suppose picnic table kind of thing and it reminds me a lot of like high school i'm not gonna lie with how these seats are but we do have some space here which is pretty cool that leads to a window location towards uh, this direction as well as to the back of the house and if we head on inside the house here, there is a little bit of an out of bounds space right here, which if we go ahead and hop on inside of, we got a desk with some more papers on it. I think they're the exact same ones actually. Oh, and it looks like it's 1230. There's also some numbers here on the panel. I doubt they have any significance, but kind of cool to see. And if we go ahead and hop on out on the other side behind this wall by, well, there's some jail cells here labeled specimen one and specimen two. I'm not sure what was originally in these jail cells, although they are pretty large and there is a lot of writing actually, hold on. I am the vessel he uses for travel. I am the transmission through which he broadcasts. I am the trigger for his weapon. With my mind, he shall enlighten. With my feet, he shall tread. Who, what, why? Pain, lots of pain it looks like. So definitely someone who's gone crazy or made to go crazy by some experiments on him, perhaps here at the Broken Arrow facility. So yeah, not exactly sure who was in this jail cell. I would love to know if you guys do, but we can go ahead and hop on into this one, which is a lot smaller than that one. Although it has the exact same kind of writing on the wall, though. Open new worlds, open the gateway. His ascension will be complete. Huh. Man, everyone's trying to play Ascension. I mean, great map, dude, but this is not that map, you know? So, like, calm down, all right? Jeez, we're playing Black Ops 4. And as we head on out to the backyard, we're immediately met with, well, this going on out here, which it looks like something, like, crash-landed, and oh my god, look at this, charcoal. Is that a human, or is that one of those, like, robot things? Oh my god, what happened to you? And there is actually a whole lot of them, a whole bunch of body bags. And I thought originally this was like something that crashed into the ground, but looking at it now, it definitely seems to be a massive burn pile. So uh, yeah, pretty unfortunate for these individuals. It seems that they did not make it through the zombie outbreak here, or I suppose whatever happened at this facility. It's kind of interesting to see like some of the models here. Like it looks like this was just placed on the ground, this whole like chunk of corpses. And you can see some weird deformities with it, like tread marks on it in places that it doesn't make sense. And like this guy's face, which is like twisted in a really weird way. Yeah, like look at that perspective, man. Crazy. We got another truck out here. It doesn't seem like there's anything too interesting about it. It has the same exact insignia on it, the number 13 and all that fun jazz. And a whole lot more desert as usual. Which I will say, it is pretty fun to be able to walk out here. The entire area has collision, by the way. Like, I'm pretty sure like even all the way out here, if we just follow this fence line, yeah, we can walk among all of this. I mean, I'm not sure why you'd want to, considering there isn't anything out here, but it is a pretty cool experience. And after that, it looks like all we have left is the normal Nuketown area, as well as the bunker system as well, which has a whole lot of window locations. And I think a lot of them are gonna be pretty cool, but before we get to it, let's take a sip of the coffee. Because of course, 
I have my coffee with me here this morning. I hope wherever you are, whatever time you're watching this, you're enjoying yourself because I love exploring maps like this. I really don't think I would have enjoyed this map. I mean, it seems extremely cramped. Like, even this normal Nuketown area is very different than the original Nuketown. And I mean, the original Nuketown was cramped enough, but this one has a whole bunch more, like, modeling here in areas just making it harder to train zombies than it needs to be. I don't get why this is here. It makes no sense. Kind of just makes the map less fun, in my opinion, but maybe that's just me. Tell me if I'm wrong. But I will say, nonetheless, just like all of the other Black Ops 4 maps, the modeling is very beautiful. I mean, there's a great art style going on here. I mean, just look at that right there. Ah, reminds me of the good old days. But nevertheless, I am still quite enjoying the exploration of the artwork here. I mean, there's a lot of really cool details. Oh, is that like a tape recorder? Can I open that? What's going on here? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't seem like I can pick it up in any way, huh? Unfortunate. Well, anyways, if you are enjoying any of this, consider leaving a like down below. It helps me out a ton. And of course, subscribe so you can come back for more. But without further ado, let's continue. So I'm noticing there's this out of bounds space as well, just outside of the normal Nuketown space. And I'm immediately wondering, like, why does this exist? It just doesn't make sense to me. Again, it's used to spawn zombies. Sure, get that. I understand that part. But yet again, do you really think it's a good gameplay decision to have so much clutter just in the middle of the street here? Like, it doesn't feel like you're on a street anymore. It feels like you're in, like, a weird alleyway thing you gotta go through on the sidewalk. It just doesn't work, man. At least in my opinion, it doesn't. All right, enough complaining. Let's get inside the map. Check out some stuff going on here. And we did just check out the Nuketown bus here at least a little bit, which has a massive barrier in it, unfortunately. But we can get a little bit of a fly-through at least and see some of the controls up front. I mean, it's pretty well designed, I do have to say, and there's this tape recorder as well, which I imagine you can do something with, but perhaps because I don't have doors open, it's just not interactable. We also got the red truck here to check out, and, uh, well, it is not exactly well modeled like the bus and other vehicles around the map, but we can even hop in the back here and see if there's anything going on back here behind all the boxes and stuff, but it seems like we just got some, like, filing cabinets and boxes, and, oh my god, what is happening to me? Let's see, does it do the same thing as the original Nuketown? Will it just, like, pop me out to the side? Yep, definitely does. Although, there is a little area here that you can stand, but not exactly a whole lot of space. But let's start going outside the map. Here on my right, we have a little bit of an out-of-bounds space alongside the building, which leads up to a window location that goes inside of it. And, of course, this wraps around the entire thing towards the backyard. There's not entirely anything interesting here. But for completionist's sake, we had to check it out, right? We also have this space in front of the garage, which is a little bit more interesting. I mean, there's some more stuff going on on the boxes, for instance. Definitely a lot more propage going on. And, of course, we got another vehicle here, which, again, pretty cool. And if we hop on into the yellow house here, well, we're immediately met with a window location on our left. Just like Newtown, this leads on into the garage, which is a pretty cool space here as well. We got another one of these robot guys just chilling in a laundry bin. And some writing on the wall. I can hear it in my head. It tells me everything will be okay. I must accept it. Must protect the others. I am the threat. I am the threat. Oh my god. Got to get it out of my head. Interesting. So clearly, whoever this guy is that's writing all this stuff and was probably a prisoner here as well, definitely seems like he's uh, being invaded by a mind virus, huh? But we do have a window location here, so let's go ahead and hop on out of it. We got some chivalry going on. And it leads out to this area that wraps around to the back. But we do have this space over here, which is kind of cool to check out. I mean, we got some, like, wood, obviously, as well as some chairs and a little table that has a barrier. I can't get to it, but okay. And this sprinkler, which, uh, it's going three different directions at once. This area does wrap around the building, which is kind of cool. There's another chair just overturned. But around the back, I mean, there's not exactly much detail, which I suppose makes sense. I mean, you wouldn't see any of this. But it does wrap around the entire building. I mean, we could walk through all of it. And if we head on upstairs of that yellow house, of course, we are met with this area, which looks a lot different than the original. Oh, the closet space still exists. Look at that. In the original Nuketown, this little hidden space was here as well. And I mean, I don't know why, but I just thought it was kind of cool to see. And actually, getting inside of here... We can see some of the OG textures of that room. Or at least this looks a lot like the original Nuketown wallpaper did. I mean, just off of memory, I suppose. I could be completely wrong, but 
everything else here looks very different than it did in the original. But we do have a window location here, which is kind of cool. It leads to an area that you normally don't get to see in the original as well as in this. And there's a whole bunch of books on a bookshelf as well as some other cabinets. And, and I got to say, the layout of this room is really strange. Like there's just another bookshelf right here and a chair facing, well, I guess facing the window, but yeah, kind of kind of weird, huh? And just because we can, let's go ahead and take a walk on the rooftop here. Look out over the backyard. It's always kind of cool just to see like how high some of these barriers are. And it looks like this one is relatively flat just over the entire thing. Although it's actually not high enough for this chimney. So this chimney has collision and we can walk on top of it. You can see it kind of like raises us up. But heading on down to the backyard here, there's not a lot to check out, but there's a few things I want to see. One of them is this, right? Obviously, you can buy this door, right, and get a free power up. And I think normally in Nuketown, this changes whenever that clock goes down to zero. So I imagine probably the same thing happens here, although I'm not entirely sure. I mean, you guys will have to let me know who played. But if I hop on inside of here, can I pick it up without buying the door? I can. Oh my god, what does that voiceover do? What? And there's also this little detail here, which you can definitely see from inside the map, but I just noticed there is definitely a rack of ribs here on the, uh, well, I guess what would have been the fire. Someone's been cooking. I imagine that is whoever is going crazy here, and maybe this is why he's going crazy. He might be eating the undead, doing a little bit of cannibalism here, eating the undead, and as we know, that does drive you insane because of the 115 and all that stuff, right? I think that's what's happening with Stuhlinger, right? With the, uh, the whole Victus crew stuff. And uh, I suppose to cap things off, let's just, you know, go ahead and uh, play in the sand real quick. Sand castles in the sand, in the sand, in the sand. But all right, I suppose that is it for the yellow house. Obviously, we got a bunker here as a new addition, but we'll be checking this stuff out here in just a bit. But before we do, let's go ahead and fly on over, take a walk around the map to the green building which I suppose we got some out of bounds space right here that leads to a window inside the building and there's not a lot going on, just a whole bunch of mud and, and actually a lot of water here, which there's a sprinkler constantly going over here, but there is way less water than over here where there's no sprinkler at all. Kind of kind of funny how that is. But anyway, this of course leads out to the backyard here and there's a window location in the shed, which is kind of cool. I actually don't think that was the case in the original. So I remember checking out the shed and there was nothing in it in that, but we can check it out here as well. And it seems like this is a lot better modeled, actually, a lot better modeled. We got a random head here on the shelf and a bunch of pots and stuff like that. Oh, and a saw. What's been happening here? Some Like guts in a bucket too, or I guess it's a pot. Is, is this person like trying to grow zombies? Is this what's happening? What's, what is happening here, dude? I mean, I suppose this very well could be just referencing like the whole like grave situation over here, digging up and burying dead bodies. But then again, why would you need a saw for that? And why would you put guts inside of a pot? I don't, I don't get it. And out back behind the greenhouse, there's something hidden out there in the desert. And unfortunately, for some reason, it keeps on crashing my game, so I can't get you guys with a jump scare. But out here, we definitely have a zombie Richtofen, although I suppose... I mean, it's not exactly much of a zombie, but definitely has zombie animations. And from what I found about this is whatever character you are playing in the game is what this person is outside the map. So for instance, before I was playing as Takio, so if I did it during the first recording, well, this would have been Takio standing outside the map. And in fact it was, but it crashed my game. But here, since I'm Richtofen, we got a Richtofen outside the map, floating like a couple feet off the ground, doing a little idle zombie animation. And if we head on inside the house here, I don't think there's going to be anything too terribly interesting to check out. But I mean, I've never played the map, so just taking a look at some of these areas and remembering the good old Nuketown zombies. And oh, there's a part here. Do not mind me. I'm just uh, correcting uh, litter. Well, it's, it's really cool for me. And heading on upstairs, we got a lady on a desk. Oh my, okay. I do remember this desk being there in Nuketown, or at least, you know, somewhat there in Nuketown. And we do have a window location that leads on out to the roof, which is kind of cool. Although, I guess there's just a barrier up there. And heading on into the bedroom, we got a crafting table as well as some writing here. Day 7, almost out of food, ammo running low, no word on reinforcement, commands gone quiet, we can't keep this up. So they do say we, like there's multiple people, which is kind of interesting. And this also says day 7. I mean, I haven't seen day 1 through 6 yet, but we'll keep an eye out, I suppose. Definitely a cool way to tell the story. 
And once again, just because we can, let's hop on up on top of the roof here. Get a different perspective over the map. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the least impressive map so far. I mean, I loved the original Nuketown just for what it was. It was a bonus map, obviously, in Black Ops 2, and it was a lot of fun to play. It was a really fun survival map, which at the time in Black Ops 2, you pretty much had transit or simple survival maps to play. That, that's, that was your two options when the game came out. And Nuketown provided just a little bit more of an interesting survival map than, like, Town, for instance, which, which I suppose is really not that much smaller than this map was, but... Layout-wise, it just it felt more fresh, considering you've probably at that point played a bunch of Transit. So when you wanted to play something other than Transit, Nuketown was the way to go. And uh, here on Alpha Omega, I mean, it's just not as good as I was wishing it would be, you know? But perhaps those bunkers will prove me wrong. But before we check out what's going on in those bunkers, we got one building left to check out, and that's this one right here below us. Go ahead and walk on in here. First of all, it's the Power Building, which I didn't know before this, but might as well turn that on. would say. Now we are cooking with the gas. Power restored. Stand by for facility status. Oh my. That, uh, that definitely changed, like, the saturation of the map. And what's kind of cool about this, if we go far enough away from the map, we can actually go outside of the saturation cube, whatever it is, and we see the map as it was before we turned on the power. But going on back inside this house, we do have a bit of an out-of-bound space at the back. Let's go ahead and hop on into this. Looks like we got some space here around the corner for zombies to spawn, some shelving and chairs of the sort. No little hidden details or anything like that, although looking at this from this perspective is kind of crazy. There's just like a flat wall texture here, and you can see like the drywall texture coming through. Kind of a cool little space. But other than that window location, there is this one, which is like a little area that I think zombies crawl out of. And what's kind of cool about it is there's a lot larger space in there than you would probably imagine. If we just hop on in, we can see it's like a little boiler room kind of situation. And I mean, sure, the, the room isn't exactly big, but there is a lot more headroom in here than you would think. And it's fully modeled. But I think it's time now. Let's go ahead and head on inside the bunker here. Although it's definitely changed shape quite a bit since Nuketown. But nevertheless, let's walk on down the stairs. Looks like we got a little bit of writing on the wall. Should have nuked this place when I had the chance. So does that mean that, like, in this timeline, the person who originally nuked the, like, OG Nuketown zombies decided not to do that, and because of it, this, well, well, this happened? Not entirely sure. Obviously, this is, you know, in a whole different universe kind of thing, so it could be completely unrelated. But we do have a window location here to the right, so we might as well check it out. Let's hop on into it. Got like a tarp here that's covering this corner, although there isn't anything really in the corner. And to the left, just a little space for zombies to spawn out of sight and come out the window at you. We also have a door here to the left, which if we hop on into that, we can see that there's just like a black cube here, which I imagine is only here because of the transparent glass. So it feels like you're looking into a very dark room. And heading further into the bunker here, we have the diner, which, uh, transit diner, anyone? Maybe? Not really, huh? I mean, it certainly looks a lot different than that, although theming-wise, I mean, it definitely has the same feeling. But we do have a window here, so let's go ahead and hop on into it. Looks like we are in the kitchen, and oh my god, that light was bright. Looks like if you look at that the wrong way, you get behind the orb, and oh my god, that is all you can see, isn't it? I will say, though, this is a pretty cool space. There's a whole lot of canned goods and some peaches here. And towards the back, there is a little area back here for zombies to spawn out of sight and come on into the kitchen. And it looks like on the other side from it, there's like a little bit of an identical room, although this one has a barrier in it. But if we go ahead and hop on past that, we can see it does continue a little thin hallway back here. And making our way around the room, we got another window here, which looks like it's a restroom. Hopping on into it, we do obviously have some modeling here in the area that we can see. But beyond that, well, it's completely empty. Around each corner, they don't lead anywhere. There isn't, like, an actual bathroom here. It's just emptiness. And towards the back of the room, we got this window location, which seems like some kind of storage cabinet area. Although, well, it's got another room back here, which definitely spawns zombies to come out at the window. There's not really much going on here, although it is very strange, like, the texturing inside of this room. It just seems very plain. And continuing onward, it looks like we're going into the beds, I suppose. <laughs> Apologies if, in my confusion, I accidentally shoot you, allies. Huh, so there's like some gas leaking out there. I'm imagining this is supposed to be like Nova 6 or something, but Nova 6, like, kills you. 
at least in like the Black Ops 1 storyline. Like it's extremely toxic. So I'd imagine breathing this in cannot be too good. Oh, but there's actually like a little hole in the ground here that it looks like it comes out of. And it's kind of cool to see how there's really not much to it. There's like a texture that goes around the outside and well, some rocks here just scattered about. Pretty cool to see how they pulled that off. But heading on into the bedroom here, we got some more windows. Let's hop on into this one. Seems like this is where the kids were staying. And we got a whole bunch of toys, some bookshelves and bunk beds. And at the back, another window, which is kind of weird, it's like a window location inside of a window location. But hopping on into it, we can see that there's just like a little plain room back here. I don't know if this is where the zombies spawn and then they go through two windows, or maybe this is just here for ambiance, but kind of cool nonetheless. But back inside of this area, there is more space here to explore, I suppose. It looks like that right there is one of the teleporters, so you can walk in here, but at the back over here, there is another one of these windows. And yet again, pretty much the same kind of thing, although a different shape, but same exact style. Empty room and some like wooden boards here around it. And yeah, that texture right there definitely doesn't look right, does it? Oh, and just a cool touch here, the clock on the wall is stuck at 1.15. Just like the clock on Darice, of course, kind of hinting at the whole Element 115 thing. Kind of a cool little detail that I bet most people missed. And to the right, we have this window location, which kind of just was a small, like, maintenance room, I suppose. It's got a door here, which I imagine doesn't actually lead anywhere. It doesn't seem like it would have made sense anyway. But kind of cool to see this liminal space. There's a tool cabinet here and an area here around the corner for zombies to spawn out of sight and come on out the window. But moving on from that, we got this window location, which, uh, oh boy, what is happening here? So first of all, we have what looks like some shrubbery here outside of the window, almost like this is supposed to be like an exterior window. And inside this area itself, first of all, we have obviously some crazy lighting going on, but it wraps all the way around to this window here, which I guess is on the other side of the room of, oh, there's Pack-a-Punch here. Dude, I just noticed there's Pack-a-Punch here. So I guess that window location just kind of like wraps around the entirety of Pack-a-Punch and behind it, there's like this little space that we could just fall right through. Definitely a pretty strange area with not a lot of modeling and some very, well, I mean, you can see the lighting is not ideal. And if we go ahead and no clip through the Pack-a-Punch here, there's actually a space behind it between this hallway and the Pack-a-Punch itself that the lighting obviously renders quite a bit differently. But it's pretty cool to see. I mean, it's extremely liminal and there's a whole lot of, well, different textures on each of the walls. It's kind of like a big old mishmash of different art going on. Also, looking at this, it kind of feels like maybe this turns around at some point. Like it's a circular platform that it's on. I don't know if that's the case. I mean, it probably doesn't, but it just reminds me of five in that way. Something is wrong with the machines. And then there's a window location here with a whole bunch of these mannequins in them. That's a little bit creepy. And at the back, there is a little room here for zombies to spawn with a bunch of the robot heads just on a shelf. There's one more window location left here, so let's go ahead and hop on into it. This one seems like it was a bedroom as well. And around the corner, there's not very much modeling, just an area for zombies to spawn. But it is a pretty cool area, although it doesn't seem like there's anything too special here. And now it looks like we got a couple options. We got the generators over there. We got the lounge this way, and, well, okay, more generators that way. So two two entrances to the generators and one entrance to a lounge. And, I mean, I guess I kind of feel like kicking back and going to the lounge, so let's go there first. Oh, we got some more writing here. Day nine, to my mother, my love, to my father, my gratitude. Got us cornered, last mag, not long now. That uh, doesn't seem like this guy's faring too well, does it? So that one is day nine, and the one that I saw where? Like up here in one of these buildings? Yeah, this was day seven, so I guess we'll have to look out for day eight, and obviously any other days, I suppose. Because I'm not entirely sure of the storyline here, and I'd kind of like to find them all. But anyways, here in the lounge, we're immediately met with a window location right here. Yeah, let's go ahead and hop on into it. Seems like they're storing some different things here, rugs and lamps and all the such. And around the corner, another area for zombies to spawn out of sight, like they should. And of course, a robot dude here. Looks, uh, I mean, he looks a little bit concerned, doesn't he? But continuing on, we got this little window, which is kind of like another storage maintenance closet thing again. We can walk right through the lockers, it seems. Doesn't seem like there's really anything inside of them, though. And around the corner, well, a red Solo cupped, but that is about it. Oh, it's Ted. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Your eyes look bloodshot. What is happening, dude? What have they done to you, man? 
maybe he'll come back one day, you know? But looking inside of his head, uh, that's, that's pretty creepy. Well, there is a window location here. We might as well hop on in. And again, it looks like another maintenance closet. But the modeling is quite a bit different. I mean, there's shelves and there's some toolboxes, but it looks a lot different at least. And the area around the corner seems to be a lot more shallow than the other ones. All right, not gonna lie, the window locations in this area have been pretty boring so far, so let's just hop on into this center area, which is out of bound space, although there's not exactly a lot of it. But we can at least take a closer look up at the modeling here and the, the liquor and beer bottles that they used, which if you played a lot of Black Ops 3, that'll look very familiar. On the cart here, it looks like we got some more liquor going on, and well, other than that, I mean, we got a pool table, which is awesome. But other than the mannequin laying on top of it, we do have this, which is inside the map. Some notes here on this, it says, have you guys seen Don's new robot girlfriend? She's quite the looker. Get bent, Paul, I'm happily married. Oh, sorry, have you guys seen Don's new robot wife? That's, that's pretty funny. So this is clear evidence that there's at least like a colony that had lived in here at some point. Although I imagine, well, they didn't fare too well, did they? And it's probably the case that whoever is writing these messages on the wall was the last survivor of that colony. But it's really cool to see things like that. And lastly for this room, I just kind of wanted to point out this tent in the corner, which you can normally kind of get a few into, but because we can, let's go ahead, no clip on into it. Inside, it looks like we have one of these destroyed uh, mannequins, I suppose. And I say mannequin because it doesn't seem like this is one of the robot ones. Like, it looks like the original Nuketown mannequin. There's a whole bunch of blood in here, as well as a lantern and some, like, sheets, I suppose. Oh, and there's a window that is actually transparent, and behind it is just a tiny little space here to give the map some depth. Kind of cool to see. And I'm noticing here that the balls here on this table do not have physics, which is a definite step back from, well, DLC 1, Dead of the Night. And it looks like this just leads right on out to the surface here, which is where? Oh, behind Yellow House. But there are a few windows in this entry location, like this one right here, which, uh, caution electric cable. I don't exactly see any, but okay. And there's a door in here, but I imagine, yeah, on the other side, there isn't anything. Although there is this, like, larger space back here, which is a window location on this side, so let's go ahead and hop on into it. We've got a biohazard symbol here, just like an inch off the wall. And the space is a lot larger than I thought it would be. There's even a space over here where I guess the zombies probably spawn for this window, and over on this side, well, I imagine this is just for some ambiance. But all right, trekking on back here, we got to go through one of the doors that we haven't gone through yet, which uh, I guess is generators, huh? There's, there's two doors here leading to the same place, so I suppose it probably doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and hop on through this one, and oh my god, I'm stuck in a barrier. So as far as this place goes, it looks like we got a little bit of an out-of-bound space here in the middle where, like, the generator is, which is cool and all, but I immediately wondered the second I walked through this door... I mean, there's a Bowie knife on a locked door, and if you look right here, it definitely seems like there's space back there. So let's go ahead and go on through it. Sure enough, there is an area back here with some, well, I suppose ambient lighting for the two areas that you can see it from inside the map. And there's not exactly any modeling in here, although I am bumping into some kind of barrier, which I imagine is probably just clipping from some other part of the map. Because you'll notice in the top left-hand corner, it says I'm in the cul-de-sac, which obviously I'm not. So, yeah, this isn't some kind of hidden Easter egg room, I imagine. But still, really cool. And making our way around the room, we got a window location over here, which does seem kind of large, and oh my god, man. The lighting change in some of these windows is its kind of getting annoying. Like, it's giving me a headache. So, sorry for you guys watching. I imagine you feel the same, but this area is pretty large. And it does actually have a lot of these panels here along the wall. Just a big old area for zombies to spawn here around the corner. But other than that, there doesn't seem to be any more window locations in here. And the other two doors, well, they're locked. We got one here for solitary and another one over here for storage. But there doesn't seem to be a way into them yet. I imagine there's some little, like, step you gotta do to open them. I don't know if it has to do with, like, this generator thing, for instance. I mean, it says, ventilation system failure, please reboot. And I'm wondering immediately, like, do I got to open this door, perhaps, to turn on interaction? Maybe I can do something with this. Enable ventilation systems. System restoration initiated. Ventilation oh, system. here we go. One minute, to One minute to reactivation. Oh, I am locked in here with, what are you? Like a super, super evolved Nova crawler? Is that what this is? Crazy, man. Now I'm getting stuck in a corner with a ton of zombies. You know, luckily I got God mode on, huh? Because I don't exactly have a weapon. 
Well, all right. I guess we did that. Hey, we got a free max ammo. Max ammo. So although it says that that has failed, those doors did open. So we got access now to the storage and solitary rooms. I guess let's go to storage. And walking on in through here, we see that there's some like little crawl space window kind of things. And on the other side of these, we can see, well, there's just like a little small room here and some rubble. Looks like the same can be said for this one. So let's go ahead, head on up the stairs into storage which it definitely looks like this is storage. Ooh, part, where is it? What a waste to let this go unused. Nice. We got a window location here with some, uh, well, I guess a lot more canned goods again. And I don't know, like water jugs, I guess, probably. Little area around the corner for zombies to spawn. But other than that, I mean, the modeling again kind of looks a lot like other places. And we have these survival kits. County offices of defense. Okay, cool. Sanitation kits, supplies 20 persons. Wow. Continuing around the room, we got this area, which kind of looks like a jail cell, although I suppose looking inside of it, it definitely isn't. There's a bunch of radio equipments, like the good old World at War radios, some like boxes and stuff, and a whole lot of ammunition. Around the corner, yet again, another place for zombies to spawn, but it looks like this is another one of those tape recorders. I don't know if there's anything you can do with these, but it definitely looks like the other one. And it makes me wonder if there's like some kind of side Easter egg, like with these hidden around the map. Cause that one on the bus, for instance, well, to me at least, it seems like it's out of place. And because of that, really makes me wonder if there's some way to interact with it. And over here, it looks like we got another room, which definitely has some stuff going beyond it. And a little blueprint for these robots, I suppose. Adam, Advanced Automated Machine Service Robot. How does that spell Adam? AD for advanced, I guess? Advanced automated, I, I guess it makes sense. I mean, this is a real stretch. Program to perform general housekeeping, personal driver. So like, is Ted one of these as well? I guess so, huh? Maybe Ted's like an early version. Dated 4-10-1965. Current issues to be resolved. Aggressive water exposure still causes total system failure. It can wash dishes uneffective, just don't let it jump in a pool. I mean, fair enough. Exposure to in-use microwave can trigger a total system reboot, causing all programming to reset in one instance. The Atom perceived humans as a threat and attacked. So if we get some kind of microwave radiation, can we like turn these guys on? Imagine, oh my God. Exposure to children under seven months can cause the Atom to panic violently and use the child as a weapon? What? Dude, what are they making here at Broken Arrow, man? Oh, man, now I bloodied it too, and I can't read the rest. Okay, it went away. Interaction with mimicry birds can cause the atom to get stuck in a feedback loop forever. And in two instances, preparing sausage for a meal caused an atom to get stuck in German language mode. Not sure what's happening here. Working on re something. Probably repair? I don't know. Definitely pretty cool, but let's go ahead and hop through this green door, see what's going on in here. I mean, it definitely seems like this is a window location, at least for this area right there, but I'm wondering if there's a way to get this open, and maybe there's like a part in here you gotta get, because it does seem like the zombies have pathing through this door. Yeah, I'm not seeing any part though, so I don't exactly know if that's the case, but let me know down in the comment section if you guys know, because I'd love to as well. But it seems like that is it for this room. And continuing onward, we got an exit this way and to our right, well, a hallway that looks a lot like the basement of five. We'll check this out in just a second, but first let's go ahead and go up these exit stairs. Cause of course there is a window location here and for completion's sake, we gotta hop into it. There's a whole lot of space and actually it's a U-shaped window that goes around this entire thing, which is kind of cool. And on the other side, there is a door here, I suppose. And another little location where zombies crawl into the map. But, ah, uh, fresh air, huh? Oh, what is what is happening here, dude? This is a very different world than I'm used to. Well, I guess it's time to go back in the bunker already, so let's do that. And I suppose we'll head this way? So, I mean, immediately there is a window location on both sides, which hopping into this one seems kind of large, actually. Like, it's huge compared to the other ones that we've been looking at. There's a little, like, bed space here or something, I suppose, around the corner that's kind of floating. And you'd never see it, so I'm not exactly sure why it's there. It might just be something clipping through the wall, actually. Oh, it's a zombie spawn again. Okay, so that's another little crawl out location. But anyways, at the back, we do have a doorway that leads to another little crawl out location here. And on the other side, we got this area, which has a whole bunch of tanks in it. Don't know if this is like Nova 6 or what, but 
whatever it is, they've been storing a whole lot of it. And at the back, we got a cabinet here that has no collision, and it's not exactly against the wall either. But heading on into here, APD control. Oh, so this is the base of the MPD thing that we saw earlier. So I guess it's not an MPD, but it's an APD. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is, but I'm sure some of you guys know. And there is quite a bit of space down here, although it seems like most of the window locations are like these little crawl out ones. But we do have one over here, which looks kind of cool, actually. It looks like a little lounge space or something of the sort. Bunch of little stools for people to sit on, I suppose. And oh my god, a whole lot of barriers. I can't really walk much. But we can take a look at some of the space and it doesn't look like we have a ton going on, although there's a lot of like papers on the ground. And I mean, looking at it here, it's hard to read, but it does look like it has actual words on it. But yeah, around the corner, it looks like there's just an area here for some zombies to spawn out of sight and, uh, well, coffee machine. Nice. We got another window location right here, which seems like it's a little bit of a lab, like, desk area. There's a door at the back of it, which if we go in through it, unfortunately, there isn't any hidden room here. But it is pretty cool to see this, and to my right, this does connect with this area, which is, like, a little bit of a liminal space that you can kind of get a glimpse at from underneath this, like, garage door. Definitely a cool area, although it doesn't seem like I have very good collision here with these, like, grates. And continuing onward this way, it leads to yet another window location in the same room on the other side. Yeah, I could definitely see how playing this map would be extremely annoying with all these wolves coming at you and charged crawlers. Like, if Nova crawlers couldn't get more annoying. But oh my god, look at your beautiful face. Let me get up in there. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was uncalled for. Okay, and there's also this doorway which leads into solitary. Okay, so we'll check that out in just a second. Because before we do, I mean, I'm wondering, like, what's inside of this pyramid? I mean, surely there's an Easter egg step where you open this door, right? Because there's a staircase leading right up to it. So, uh, let's go ahead, use a little bit of no clip, hop on into it, and oh my god, there's a portal here. Is that what I'm looking at? I don't know if this is supposed to be a portal, or... I mean, maybe that's just there so you can see that effect through that little slit. But... As far as inside the actual M, well, APD, sorry, there isn't exactly all that much. It's pretty hollow. But again, this blue wall thing that's going on definitely has me thinking that there's like a way to open this and maybe that teleports you somewhere. Yet again, you guys will have to let me know down in the comments. But all right, let's head on in to solitary, see what's going on in here. It looks like immediately to our left, well, it goes up to some play space we've seen before. APD interrogation. I suppose I probably could have read that before. No, it's not an MPD. Huh, that's kind of embarrassing. But we got some writing on the wall. He is everything. He is light. I wonder who he is. And there's a window location here, which again, I guess solitary confinement, right? So this is like a little jail cell. And it's got all of the same writing that those other ones did. You know, the I am a vessel. He uses me for travel stuff. Yeah, very creepy. It seems like the same guy is like being held in a whole bunch of different places around the map. Which, I mean, doesn't really make a lot of sense, but still really cool to see. And on the left side, there is another one of these little areas. If we hop on into it, it looks like the same exact kind of deal. Another solitary confinement cell, again, with a whole lot more writing. And this has the word creation. That's very large. Very large word creation there. I wonder, I wonder why. No, no, no. You cannot see through the fog. The fog. The fog is translucent through which he is revealed. Interesting. And as for behind door number three, well, there's a cell here as well. And it's fully modeled. But yet, there is definitely no way to see inside of here. So again, I'm wondering if there's a way that this opens. Or maybe this is used for like a cutscene at some point. I'm not entirely sure. But really cool to see that there's a hidden room here. I'm really wondering what this is used for. And I hate to say it for like the hundredth time this video. But if you guys know, please let me know. Because... I'd love to find out. This is a really cool area. And down these stairs, well, it brings us back to the generators. So I guess solitary is literally just these three cells, huh? And I mean, I suppose this robot behind a desk. But that is it for me, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, leave a like on the video. It helps me out a ton. And of course, subscribe so you can come back for more. You can click one of the videos on your screen right now if you're interested in watching more of my content. But if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay awesome. Peace out.